Uh, we're now going to hear from Major General Deborah Ashenhurst and Colonel Duncan Auckland, uh, two more heroes of mine. I have had an absolutely wonderful time working with both of them. Uh, Duncan Auckland chairs our State Bar Military Committee. Adam Miller, who has shown up, was our original co-chair, our original chair. And uh, I probably talk pretty regularly every week to this gentleman and uh, frequently to the Major General. And uh, she's been very inspirational in the things that she's taken on and the new challenges she's making. There's a couple extra exciting projects that they're working on. She is a member of the governor's cabinet. She's responsible for the command of the Ohio National Guard for the military readiness of the Ohio militia. And, uh, and uh, there's this picture of her floating around the internet of carving a, a pumpkin. And there's this, 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 this juxtaposition of her and this absolutely giant pumpkin that sticks in my mind when I think of her right now. Thank you for coming and sharing. Thank you so much. It's uh, almost intimidating to stand up here with this star-studded cast of, uh, of uh, speakers you have here. Uh, specifically, I would I always hate that to, to follow Justice Stratton because I don't know when she sleeps. I don't know how she puts 48 hours of work into every 24-hour period. But the work you do, and it's not just for veterans. It's for so many different causes that she takes up the the uh, banner and runs. I, I don't know how she does it all. So I always feel like I'm I'm lacking in my contribution anytime I get to spend some time with her. But, but not that, but to have Congressman Stivers and understand that it's because of the impetus of, of the justice that so many people are engaged. You know, Director Moe, Colonel Moe, and, and his story, but what he does, what he is doing to make sure other veterans have such opportunities. Um, Director Hedrick, what great things. And to be able to just hear a little bit about that. Uh, Judge Millich, you know, a long history with Judge Millich, not in his court. <laughs> but with him personally, uh, so glad to see that he has taken up this banner and that his military service plays a lot in that too. But most, I'm just so glad not to follow Chris Ann uh, Gordon. <laughs> you know, people say I'm high energy, but to her, it looks like I'm laying dead. That woman has a lot of energy and, and having many opportunities to work with her. So, so I'm going to try to do my little piece in this star-studded cast you put together, Justice, just to say. So, so thanks for taking a few um, minutes with us today. Let me talk a little bit about the subject of the wounds of war. Uh, I'm very pleased to support the efforts and accommodate any needs that you have, Justice, as we're trying to publicize the resources and increase the resources that are available to our service members as well as our, our veterans. In our national leadership, and, as in, and I'm speaking from a very small corner of the world, being the Ohio National Guard, but on the national level, our leadership, as well as the leadership in, in our Ohio National Guard, has done a phenomenal job of training and deploying and leading our service members in support of the contingency operations and the wars that we've been engaged in for the last 11 years. But now, as we head into that post-war era, and it's hard to think of that in today's you know, vernacular. When we say post-war era, we're always thinking of, of World War II and, and Vietnam, but we're headed into our own post-war era. So we, we work hard to get out the message about the, the signs of post-traumatic stress and the help that's available to our service members that may be in need. I know we're a resilient force, and, but even with the most resilient of us can be challenged by that more than 10 years of war and so many of our folks multiple deployments into the theater of war and have seen things that no human should ever have to see and to think they've done it time after time. And our service members and our families are sometimes, uh, they're very proud and sometimes uh, falsely assume that seeking care will harm their military careers or, or harm their opportunity for jobs, as Director Mo was just talking about, when the reality is that not seeking care and not seek, seeking, seeking help is going to harm their functionality and ultimately hurt their careers. And so it's in situations where service members have not sought care, sought care that it frequently leads to legal issues and they get into problems and they have issues. So uh, the courts have that unique knowledge now that we're getting to, and hopefully we'll get to in all 88 counties, uh, to, to intervene and to understand the effect that war has had on these individuals and how that impacts their behavior and, and sometimes their actions. So we, we know the Veterans Courts and short-term, well-researched psychotherapy works. And uh, in, in those service members and veterans who receive treatment in lieu of incarceration, have a very low rate of recidivism. Oh, I've got it out. I always struggle with that word, recidivism. When she said it this morning, I, I got to do it. Hey, but, so we have to do collectively 
within our respective spheres of influence what we can do to influence and give our veterans that edge and give those that are suffering from mental health and substance abuse, which is usually the self-medication for mental health issues, uh, the opportunity to heal. And you know, we need every county in Ohio to provide these important services to all of our veterans and all of our service members. You know, Army suicides are up. If you read the papers at all, you know we're up 15% in our suicides in the Army over the last year. And Marines, Marines are up 28% with suicides over the prior year. You know, according to the Ohio Army National Guard's mental health initiative that we've got about three years running now, 25% um, of, our, of our representative sample have an alcohol, we try not to say abuse, an alcohol use issue or suffer from depression. 25% of that representative sample. So it's, as you extrapolate that, you can see the, the significance of our problems. 10% of them have generalized anxiety. 10% have um, PTS that they will admit to. So in summarizing that, the service members and veterans have significant behavioral health issues, but PTS is not the most significant. Alcohol use disorder and depression are our greatest concerns right now, and frequently they go in hand in hand. Now, is that a sign of PTS? And Dr. Payton, your, your presentation was great, and he's back there nodding his head. Um, there exists in the general population a stigma, and, and a couple of people have alluded to that, a stigma to seeking help for behavioral health or for mental health issues. And this stigma is magnified when it comes to the military population. And everybody's concerned that it's going to hurt their military career or they won't have opportunities if they admit they need a little help. In some representative um, statistics from our study, of those that needed care, those that admitted they needed care, only 37% pursued that care. And those with alcohol use disorders that they self-reported, only 23% sought care. And there are excellent, well-searched, short-term treatments that are out there just for these conditions. And in most cases, in 12 weeks of psychotherapy and treatment, that can be, can be highly effective in helping them deal with the issue and figure out how to overcome the self-medication, the drug use, the alcohol use, and to deal with their problems. And these treatments can be provided by the VA, by our vet centers, by community um, health care, private insurance, TRICARE, it's all out there to help them. We just have to help them reach out and make sure they understand it's okay to reach out. You know, we've invested in a comprehensive array of strategies to address the mental health issues and substance abuse order, disorders that we're aware of or that we can at least reach out and touch people on. And our staff resources now include a director of psychological health, and you heard Dr. Gordon refer, um, refer to Dr. Kaufman this morning. He's a full-timer on my staff, and he, he is my primary response when we get somebody that uh, the leadership has identified with suicidal tendencies, or we call them suicidal ideations. He is immediately, and anybody who comes up on to the surface through the chain of command, through their families, that they have a, a mental health condition, they're having trouble reintegrating into society. And at his fingertips, he has a resource across all 88 counties, almost 88 counties, but throughout the state of professionals that are willing to reach out and help our service members. We just have to get to the point where they know that they can ask for that help or that somebody can refer them to that help. You know, we also have military family life consultants. Uh, we maintain close coordination with the, the Veterans Affairs, the Veterans Services, the Vet Centers, our community behavioral health providers. You know, we're all integrated and we're all working together. We have an extensive, uh, we, we have and provide extensive training in resiliencies. And we've applied suicide intervention skills to all of our service members, but also to their families, helping them understand how to see those signs that are out there that maybe in everyday life you just think he's having trouble reintegrating. She's just angry at other issues when really, if you understand these can be signs that could lead somebody to suicide and those red flags go off. So that training's been very important to us. And I, I finally got him to stop reporting to me on suicide intentions and instead reporting them to me as a life saved. Because that's what we're doing with all these programs. You know, we, um, after our deployments, we conduct inter integration, reintegration training and programs and individualized screenings. We provide similar programming and pre-screening before they go to war, 
while they're deployed, and then we get back so that we, get, we have some base and can see any differences in any change in the individuals. But I tell you, when you have them coming back 2,500 at a time, we're going to miss something. So making sure the community knows what's going on, making sure the employers know what's going on, so that everybody's looking for signs of change, for unexplained anger, for disruptions, that they understand that there's a place to call to help that service member get some help. And we provide substance use disorder screening, and we have mandatory training programs that our commanders can direct our service members to if they won't take the initiative themselves. And we've launched a, oh wait, we're about to launch a well-being questionnaire, where we did one last year. We got a, that's gonna be very targeted that we're gonna go out in 2013 with all of our soldiers and airmen in the Ohio National Guard. And the questionnaire provides the soldiers and the airmen the opportunity to request additional help or additional information or just assistance. Uh, it can be related to stress, it could be homelessness concerns, it could be financial concerns, employment, VA benefits, anything that they haven't reached out for and haven't looked for. And with that survey, now it's not an anonymous survey, you, it is you and that is survey is attached to you, but based on what they put in there, we will respond with the specific help and assistance that they're asking for. Because there's a barrage when they come home, everybody wants to help and they get inundated with opportunities and everybody that wants to help, where if we can give them a little time to settle in, figure out where their home is again, and then give them this survey, then we can get back to them with the significant, uh, significantly target help that they've asked for. So, you know, Ohio is home to almost a million veterans. Did you know that? We're a very patriotic state. And 46,000 that are serving act as active and, um, and guard and reserve type organizations, the so sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guards, we have them all in Ohio, okay? even Navy. And so, for us to have these services available to them is, is great, but if we can't figure out how to get the information to them so they know how to ask for that service, then, then we're not doing any good. So that's why it's important that people like Justice Stratton and all of you that are willing to come here, what's available, because you never know when somebody's going to enter your life or just pass through that you'll see something and you'll be able to direct them to the help that's needed. So uh, I had some great closing remarks about who's going to carry the torch when we lose Justice Stratton, but having talked to her today, she's committed that she's going to continue to carry this torch and that that light at the end of that torch is just going to continue to get brighter because she's going to be have um, less restrictions on how she can go about helping us. So Justice Stratton, I can't tell you how uh, relieved I am to hear that. So thanks for this opportunity today to talk with everybody.